Yeah. <coughs> Depression's the friggin' worst. I've been dealing with depression for several years now, but I think I finally have a hold of this thing. It's a slippery, greasy hold, but a hold nonetheless. The main way I've gotten this hold is, at least in part, to video games, as you may have figured out by looking at the title of the video. Let me be clear, gaming alone won't cure depression, and if you want to make amazing progress with your mental health, you should absolutely see a therapist. But because you guys already clicked on the video, here's four ways that I use gaming to help my depression. Whenever I'm going through depressive episodes, these things called ants, or automatic negative thoughts, will come up and try to ruin my day. They sound something like, Ugh, I'm not good enough, I'm stupid, among much more unfavorable things. However, I find that whenever I play games with a learning curve to them and master some of the more sick tech, these ants start to fade away. I feel like I've done something. That I'm capable of doing more than what these ants say I can. Techniques like wave dashing and smash, speedrunning strategies and platformers among other titles, and parrying and god knows how many games are the dev's way of giving their players something to aim for. An example that I love to point to is the parrying mechanic from Street Fighter 3, Third Strike. For those unfamiliar, while in-game, if you're about to get hit, tap the stick forward or down, and your character flashes blue and will be able to attack as your opponent's recovering. Essentially, if you want to successfully parry, you need to tap the stick forward in a tenth of a second. Some say that it wasn't successfully implemented, as Street Fighter 3 sold much less than other Street Fighter titles, but fans like me tend to disagree and fall in love with the game in spite of the learning curve. Parrying in mechanics like it take a game from some measly pastime to a true talent that needs to be honed and mastered. That's what the developers intended it for. But it's not just an amazing technique. It's a technique that needs to be honed by epic gamers like yourself. Not just anyone can master the parrying technique. Daigo Umahara, Justin Wong, people of legend are the only ones who are able to truly get a hold of techniques like parrying. If you practice it enough, soon you'll become gods just like them. Dominate your local competitive scene with some sick tech. All hail Soupy Max! All hail Soupy Max! <laughs> that was uncomfortable. I need to calm down for a little bit. Just, uh, here's the next bit of advice I have for you. This may come as a surprise to some, but I actually enjoy grinding depending on the game. It allows me to relax and turn my brain off after a long day of having an existential crisis. I love trying to catch a rare Pokemon in those games because it feels like I'm making a discovery in this fun poppy world. With looter shooters like Warframe and Borderlands, I'm in a shooting gallery and get rad new weapons while looking cool. And in Diablo, where loot is king, mowing through hundreds upon hundreds of enemies for hours on end, then getting a legendary item is a very satisfying feeling. However, therein lies a problem for me when it comes to grinding. The journey becomes much less important than the destination. It could take forever to get rewards for everything I just mentioned. It gets stale using the same few moves to KO other Pokemon in the area. And mowing through the drones in Diablo and Warframe just feels like easy mode after a while. This is where I feel that grinding could improve. Because while it's fine to turn my brain off and go through the motions, if I'm doing that for hours, it feels like I've wasted my time. The one game that I feel makes that journey just as rewarding as the destination is the Monster Hunter series. Unlike most other grinding experiences in games, Monster Hunter always keeps the gameplay engaging while on the search for a rare item. We've established that while the hunt for something rare is what makes the grind worthwhile, most of the time, the journey getting that item, Pokemon, whatever, winds up feeling monotonous and boring halfway through. Monster Hunter is where the journey becomes just as fun as the destination. From the first steps I took walking into the docks to every anxiety-ridden second of charging my greatsword into a Rathalos tail, Monster Hunter has continued to set a golden standard for grinding in video games. 
A typical play session in Monster Hunter consists of finding a set of armor or a weapon to build, then creating a shopping list of which monster parts to carve, before going on a near genocidal killing spree in search of a Dodo Gama's fine ass. Every kill, every movement, every decision is different. You're always involved. And when I finally crafted that armor, there aren't a lot of things more satisfying. I did that. Me. 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 So in all honesty, grinding isn't for everybody, and that's perfectly fine. But for me, as long as I have the right kind of game, I'm able to lean back and relax perfectly fine. But sometimes I don't want to relax. Sometimes I want to just get out of here. Oh, oh, hey, 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 where the fuck are you going? I mean, like, out of here. Out of this reality. Know what I mean? God damn it. Escapism can absolutely be a healthy way of dealing with depression, but it has to be used sparingly. Being in a world filled with gods and monsters that's so different from our own brings about feelings of immersion that no other form of media can touch. It's the magic of video games. Just remember to step back and experience the real world every now and again. Two things that I feel make a game feel real are its world and its story. The Monster Hunter titles have an incredibly lively, active environment. Every creature has programmed routines and interactions with one another, which means that an Apanath can drink from a stream one minute and find a tasty bush to dig into the next. NPC behavior is a wonderful addition that I'm grateful for in modern gaming. It shows just how much love and care the developers had while writing every line of code. When talking about immersion in gaming, I feel that unless your game focuses on a linear narrative along the lines of Inside, The Telltale Games, or Life is Strange, story is not essential. However, while not essential, that doesn't mean that game stories are inherently bad. Games like Metal Gear Solid and Hollow Knight are stories that can only really be told through gaming. On paper, characters like Snake are fairly flat. However, what elevates them to incredible modern characters is the fact that you're controlling them. From the player first picking up a controller until the moment they put it down, there is a connection established. I feel for the plight of Snake because I'm the one forcing him to kill these soldiers and go through this never-ending cycle of violence and death. Mute characters like Hollow Knight become vessels for the player to have their own adventure. It's that connection which makes it so easy and fun to escape. Even if a story isn't essential for a game to succeed, it is a very delicious cherry on top. And it's those responsibilities that help us to become a great person, the kind of person that we want to be in our real lives. So no matter how much I want to play as a grand hero, a powerful villain, or a big tittied anime waifu, I'm gonna come back to reality. But hey, what's living without dicking around with a few friends? There are days where, even when I've tried my best, depression is a little too much to bear. One of two things happen after I realize that. I either lie down with my arms filling with lead, powerless to get up or do anything to change my mood, or I call a few friends over and we play duck game for five hours. It really is what games were made for. Playing with other people can boost the amount of fun you can have exponentially, and it is a one-stop shop for borderline curing depression. The wonderful thing about modern gaming is no matter how far away you are from your friends, you can still dick around online. There are thousands upon thousands of multiplayer titles to choose from. Shooters like Halo, TF2, and CSGO come to mind for an adrenaline-pumping gameplay session. Hearthstone, Magic the Gathering, and Pokemon are brilliant games of strategy and outsmarting your opponent to come out on top. And League of Legends is there if you hate yourself. God damn it! Are you tired of getting absolutely bodied in esports titles like League of Legends, Overwatch, and Street Fighter? Yeah, sure. Well, then you need some friends IRL. What? What? Oh, God! Ah! 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 Why do you have a mic? Why do you have a mic? That makes no sense! It's not even plugged in! What the hell? Oh, almost forgot about these! With Friends IRL, you finally have an opportunity to play all of your favorite games without crippling loneliness. Finally, get some answers to your burning questions about video games. I do the, uh, fireball really. Um, you, uh, you do a quarter circle motion, and then A, pretty quickly on the control. 
Friends IRL is not responsible for any emotional damage from teleportation shipping. So why wait? Order Friends IRL today. Good game. Thanks for having me over. I mean, once I got over the kidnapping and ransom, I actually had a pretty good time. Thanks, me too. After I got over you breaking into my house and an omniscient voice hijacking my life, I actually had a pretty good evening. Cool. You know, just invite me over next time. Yeah, of course, man. Take care. You forgot your mic! So that was fucking weird. But I don't know if I would have it any other way. When it comes to meeting people through something that I love, I think that just makes it all the more important in my life. That's probably why gaming has helped me out so, so much. I go through the daily struggle that is depression, and that makes it very difficult to get through each day. I naturally have a harder time finding ways to make myself happy. But video games have consistently been a great way to pick myself up when I'm feeling low. It's unusual that something so readily available in our lives can have such a beneficial impact on us. Too often I've thought that the only way for me to deal with my depression was to accept what I was going through and let it control my life. But with video games, I'm able to get a grip and gain control of my life again, even if it's vicariously through pixels on a screen. So whether I'm escaping into another world, kidding around with friends, or fighting a goddamn dragon, I love finding finding new ways to make myself happy. Because I deserve it. I think we all do. I think we're all allowed to. These ways, among many more, are how gaming has helped me fight depression.